Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Isaiah 14 Verse 1 For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. This promise had a measure of fulfillment when Israel was brought back from Babylon. And it is still true that when God's people come to their worst, there is always something better before them. On the other hand, it is equally sure that when sinners come to their best, there is always something terrible awaiting them. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans, God has not cast away his people which he folk knew. And his declaration agrees with this prophecy, The Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land I believe that there will be a far grander fulfillment of this prophecy in that day when God shall bring back his chosen people to their own country, and then shall be the fullness of blessing to the Gentiles, also. The strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. The chosen people now have the worst of it in many parts of the world, but they shall have the best of it, by and by. They shall not always be trampled on, their time of uplifting shall come at the last. And there is nothing after the last, that which is last, lasts forever. 3, 4. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give you rest from your sorrow, and from your fear, and from the hard bondage wherein you were made to serve, that you shall take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, how has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. O child of God, you shall, by and by, have a glorious season of rest. Today is your time of labor. You are now under hard bondage, but you shall yet come forth into the fullness of your liberty in Christ Jesus. In that day Jehovah, himself, shall give you rest from all your grief and fears. You shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This was a great prophecy for Isaiah to utter, for, in his day there was no power on earth equal to that of Babylon. That great city abounded in palaces and extraordinary wealth, and its power was such that no kingdom could stand against it. For a while it broke in pieces all those who fought against it, yet God broke Babylon in his own time. And here is a song of rejoicing in anticipation of its overthrow, how has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. 5. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. No power can ever be permanently strong that is founded upon wickedness. Sooner or later it will have to come to an end. A falsehood may array itself in the garments of wisdom and strength and go forth to fight hopefully for victory, but, in the end, it must die. The stone of the truth of God will reveal the giant's brow and lay him headlong in death. 6, 7, he who emote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted, and none hinders. The whole earth is at rest, and is quiet they break forth into singing. The Babylon that none could resist becomes, herself, destroyed and there is no one to come to her assistance. Go at this day and see where the owl dwells, and mark the habitation of the dragons, and say to yourself, This is Babylon, the great city that was the queen over all nations. But she did evil in the sight of the Lord, 
and spoke extremely proudly and, Behold, Jehovah has crumbled her in the dust and, now that Babylon is gone, the whole earth is at rest, and is quiet, they break forth into singing. Apostrophe. 8. Yes, the fir trees rejoice at you, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since you are laid down, no fella is come up against us. For the cruel kings of Babylon cut down the nations as the woodman with his axe fells the trees of the forest. But when the power of Babylon was broken, peace and quietness reigned everywhere. O oh brothers and sisters, what a blissful day it will be when the modern Babylon is taken away, for to this hour she is the troubler among the nations. Wherever the blight of popery comes, there is evil, there is oppression, there is bondage, and only when Romanism shall be utterly swept away and cast like a millstone into the flood, will it be said, the whole earth is at rest, and is quiet, they break forth into singing. Here is a very wonderful picture of the king of Babylon going down to the grave. 9, 10. Hades from beneath is moved for you to meet you at your coming, it stirs up the dead for you, even all the chief ones of the earth, it has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto you, Are you also become weak as we? Are you become like unto us? It is a fine pictorial representation of the spirits of departed kings lifting themselves up from their beds of dust and saying, Are you, king of Babylon, that slew us, also come here? The mighty conqueror, are you yourself conquered, and brought to the grave? 11 to 15, your pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of your vials, the worm is spread under you and the worms cover you. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the height of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Hades, to the sides of the pit. God hates pride with a perfect hatred. He drives his sword through the very heart of it and cuts it in pieces. None can be great and mighty, and boast of what they are able to do without provoking the King of Kings to put forth against them some of his great power. Oh. Let none of us talk about climbing to heaven by our good works, or getting the by our merits, lest it should happen to us, also, that we should be brought down to Hades, to the sides of the pit. 16-18. They that see you shall narrowly look upon you, and consider you, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. That is, they lie in state, each one in the mausoleum of his family. They went down to death and they were buried with all the honor and glory that was supposed to be due to their high position. 19. But you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. So total, so terrible. So disgraceful was the destruction of Babylon, that no honor or glory remained to it. 20-22. You shall not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people, the seed of evildoers shall never be removed. 
prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, says the Lord of hosts. And he has done it. It seemed the most unlikely thing to happen, but the Lord spoke, and it was done, all the glory of Babylon was swept away. I will rise up against them, says the Lord of hosts. 22-27 And cut off from Babylon the name, and remnant, and son, and nephew, says the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the boom of destruction, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains dread him underfoot, then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth, and this in the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who shall disnull it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? And God did this to the Assyrians in the day when Sennacherib invaded the land and the angel of destruction slew the whole host in one night. What a striking simile the Lord uses here. This is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who shall disnull it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? Conceive in your mind the picture drawn here, Jehovah himself puts out the hand of his armightiness and challenges the nations to stand up in opposition to it. 28. In the year that King Ahatz died was this burden. About this time, the Philistines had plucked up courage and had invaded Judah. 29. Rejoice not, whole Palestine, because the rod that smote you is broken, for out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. Ahatz was defeated, but Hezekiah was raised up to be the leader of the Lord's people. 30. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety, and I will kill your root with famine, and he shall slay your remnant. If God's enemies have a bright day or two, it shall soon be stormy weather with them. They may for the moment exult over God's people, but he knows that their day of reckoning is coming. 31. Howl, O gate, cry, O city, you Palestine, are dissolved, for there shall come from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed times. That is the way the Babylonians would come running down from the north. No one would be able to hide himself from them, not a single person would find a shelter, or escape from their terrible adversaries. 32. What will they answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord has founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. Though the passage seems dark at first, yet it is full of consolation to the people of God and is of similar import to that other gracious promise, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shall condemn.